Look at the story of Joseph in the Bible. He was a prisoner. Things weren't working for him. But one day he was remembered at just the right time. And that led to his promotion from a prisoner to a prime minister. Nobody could take credit for that. Hello and welcome to Own Your Lane. This is the best place for ambitious people who are taking charge of their lives, making that income, making that impact, and living fulfilling lives. How are you doing today? Today we're going to talk about double-mindedness, the curse of double-mindedness. Yep, using some strong words. But this is from my personal study. I was reading James, the book of James in the Bible, James 1, 5 to 8, around there, and I was seeing God's reaction to a person who is double-minded. That scripture says that if you have a need, ask God and he'll give you. But if you ask and you are double-minded, you are doubting and you're thinking, eh, but you're still asking, you are a double-minded person and you should not expect to receive anything from God. Basically, God does not respond or work with people who are double-minded. And that for me was just like, whoa. Because I know double-mindedness happens. Sometimes we don't even highlight it in a big way. But I didn't think that God would actually say, don't expect to receive anything from me if you're double-minded. You're like a wave that is tossed back and forth in the sea and just unreliable. That's why he won't work with you. Coming to think of it, nobody loves to work with a person who's double-minded, yet many of us are double-minded. Today we say one thing and tomorrow we do the opposite. Today we say we trust God, in the next moment we don't trust God. Our actions prove that we don't trust God. So there's a lot of double-minded. And the curse that comes with it, why I'm calling it a curse, is because God himself, your maker, says, I will not work with a person who is double-minded. So you may be kind, you may be good. You may be working hard. You may be hustling hard. You may be building this amazing system, business, whatever it is. But if you're double-minded, God refuses, refuses to rely on you and put responsibility on you and put his blessings on you because you will change your mind. You will not be trusted. You tell him, I will follow you. And tomorrow you might say, you know what? Following you seems scary. So I have changed my mind. I will not do it. And in this age, in our lives right now, I feel like we give ourselves a lot of permission to change our minds, which is not a bad thing. It is a good thing, but it also brings this kind of spoiledness where you can break promises you make, where you can be unreliable and develop trait, a habit of breaking the word that you gave, which is unreliable. And this unreliability works against you in your workplace, in your business, in your relationships, and even with God. And God is the one we want on our side because all blessings flow from him. Favor flows from him. Let me give you an example. Let me contextualize this to how I experienced it when I read it. So for me, I'm building a business. I work with people in different sectors and I help them uncover their purpose. I help them know their gifts and position themselves correctly to get the success they desire. How can I get people to work with me? So I'll do some marketing, I'll do some networking, I'll do what I can. But ultimately, people have to make the decision. And I believe it is God who helps people make decisions. So I can be here, I can do all the marketing, but you know how it is sometimes you're like, I'm doing everything I can, but it's not working out. Then one time something happens and it's like, oh, wow, I'm not doing as much, but everything is falling into place. What happens? We can call it whatever, but I believe it is the hand of God, his mercy and his favor that falls on people. Look at the story of Joseph in the Bible. He was a prisoner. Things weren't working for him. But one day he was remembered at just the right time. And that led to his promotion from a prisoner to a prime minister. Nobody could take credit for that. Even the person who remembered him couldn't take credit for that because he could have just gone to serve the king for whatever interpretation the king wanted. But he went and the king felt like, you know what, I'm going to promote you. You know what, I'm not going to ask for references. I'm not going to ask for your CV. I'm not going to do a, a background check or anything. You are just going to be prime minister. I believe that's the hand of God. And that's the hand we need in our lives. And when God says, you are double-minded, I will not work with you. We should really, really be scared about that because we want God to be on our side. We want God to be the one who's paving our paths. We want God to be the one who puts us in remembrance in different meetings where we don't have access to. You know, where you get a phone call and you're like, well, we were talking in this meeting and somebody said, you do this. So we're thinking maybe you can come in here and help us. And you're like, oh, he said somebody, I want to hug them. And you never get to know it. But God fights for his people in places where they have no access. And 
he needs you to be solid for him to fight for you because if he's fighting for you that means he has an agenda for you to accomplish in the place he's opening the door for you so you don't want him to open a door for you and you're in there and you're like okay i came here my agenda is to bring like to speak on behalf of the voiceless my agenda is to bring justice in this place and you're like there and you're like no but but change my mind change my mind this is comfortable we'll do the justice later let me chill for a little bit double-mindedness develops traits traits that make you unreliable even when you want to be because you become so accustomed to these habits that drive you and drag you so you're used to breaking your word you're used to breaking your habits you're used to not doing what you said you would do double-mindedness double-mindedness is you sabotaging yourself because you are inviting god to block your path and when god blocks a path it is blocked indeed so let's move away from double-mindedness by asking these questions what is your life about what matters to you be clear about those two things what your life is about what matters to you because when things come as options come as alternatives come you want to be clear you want to be rooted what matters to me is my faith my family my purpose done you see so when anything comes and it takes you away from your faith your family your purpose you're like no i can't sounds good but no thank you so you have to be clear on what matters to you what is your life about answer those questions and make sure that you're consistent with that path that you're saying matters to you i love this quote that says if you're running fast in the wrong direction you're wasting your life i think it's my quote unless if i heard it from somewhere and i'm repeating but it's something that i say a lot because i feel like in my life at a certain point i was running fast but in the wrong direction so i would always wonder why am i not feeling fulfilled why am i not happy yet why am i not excited about what i'm doing I was running really fast, I was getting promotions, but in the wrong thing. So if you are not clear about what matters in your life, if you're not clear about what your life is about, then you will be given options. Life will give you options. It will give you things to care about. And there'll be things that make you regret in the future, that bring dissatisfaction because you're not operating in things that are important to you or things that God has given you to operate in. So clarity is your friend. Be clear. And take time out to pause and say, okay, I love what's happening right now. Why? Is this in line with what I want to do? Do I want to shift a few things? Should I say yes? Should I say no? Have those introspective moments so that you can be clear that you're not running really fast in the wrong direction. So you are your biggest enemy and your biggest ally. Because you decide what you let in and you decide what you let out. You decide what to change. You decide what to keep up. But you can build a system in your life. A track record where you promise yourself that you live by certain standards and you pause and think am i living according to the standards that i set for myself are these standards in line with god's standards for my life and therefore you prevent double-mindedness you prevent contradicting yourself because when you contradict yourself you create this contention within yourself that will lead you to not acting it's such a stress something uncomfortable within you that makes you just give up and let go because there's no harmony within and that's what double-mindedness does you are saying one thing and you're doing the other thing that is a contradiction that you're creating within yourself you're not created to operate in such a contradiction what this contradiction will do is sabotage yourself because it is you fighting against yourself it is you pulling yourself in various directions and therefore you just end up in the middle you end up going nowhere it is the perfect route to stagnation and nobody wants stagnation so let me give you a few checks that you can put in place to check your double-mindedness and to check if there's any contradiction within yourself do you go to places that you don't like going do you often find yourself in places where you're like what am i doing here why do i even come here you're consistently in those places you don't want to be there but you still go there all the time do you find yourself in such circumstances do you find yourself hanging out with people who drain you? You know, you're like, why do I hang out with this person? I always feel negative after. I always feel tired after. Why? Do you find yourself in places? Do you find yourself with people like that? Often. Do you find yourself doing things that you said you would never do? Like I said, I would never touch my phone at bedtime, but look at me, three hours in, I'm still on my phone. This means I wake up late, it'll mess up my schedule tomorrow, but I can't stop it. Do you find yourself doing stuff like that? If you said yes to any of this, that indicates a contradiction within yourself. 
it indicates some double-mindedness that needs to be eradicated. And that takes us back to the top of our points. Be clear. What is your life about? What matters to you? That should be your guiding light. Because everything that comes into your life that doesn't align to that should be kicked out. That is how you build one mind. That's how you build reliability. So much reliability that even God trusts you. Even God says, if I give this child this present, he or she will use it this way. Guaranteed. That's the kind of trust that you want to build with God. That's the kind of trust that brings blessings, that brings success, that brings open doors. You do not want to be double-minded because you work against yourself and you raise God to work against you. And that's not what we want. I hope this episode was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please get in touch. I love to connect their details in the description box on how you can get in touch and give me feedback. Leave a comment, subscribe, like, or share. And I have a good, amazing resource that you might want to check out. It's called The Zone of Success. This is for everybody who wants to win at life. God created you uniquely different for a specific purpose. And when you understand these unique gifts and talents that he has given you, you can then forge your success effortlessly well not effortlessly but you know what i mean right you attract the success that you want in your business in your work in your relationships when you operate in this zone of success that god designed for you do you know your zone of success check out and click the link in the description and check out that exercise that i did it's a simple but effective exercise that will help you uncover your zone of success this is a free resource that i've created for people who are ambitious and they want to live their best life and click that link and do that exercise and i promise you it will transform your life i hope you found value in this episode and i ask you to stick around because there's a new episode every week invite your friends share like comment and let's connect and continue to grow i'll see you next week bye bye Mwah.